LinkedIn, Elena Forrest, one of my favorite people in the whole world. I miss you so much. We worked a ton of things together in the Bay Area when I lived there. And I just think uh, so highly of you as a leader and as a friend. And I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me. And I'm going to start off where I try to start off with everybody. With the, You transitioned from law enforcement to the private sector. What helped you and what hurt you? How did that work out for you? So I think, well, first of all, thanks, Scott. I appreciate it. And you're one of my favorite people, too. Um, so I, what helped me was having a really great chief um, and some really amazing people around me who were my mentors. And without that, I am not sure I would have been able to launch into the private sector security world as easily as I did. But I had the, the beauty and the, the grace and the, you know, the patience from my bosses and my mentors to be able to branch out and do private sector security on a part-time basis about three years before I retired. And so I started working little jobs here and there just as an off-duty officer uh, for a small you know, boutique security firm. And I was able to do everything from work the Oscars to watching paint dry, literally, to um, you know, taking prototype whatever from one airport to another, things like that. And really just raised my hand for every sort of opportunity that I could get into so that you know, I had a broad you know, kind of experience about understanding high tech, understanding entertainment, and then being able to just launch right into it after I retired. But I, I again had those people around me and I, and I sought out more people as I was getting more into the security world. And, and so I can't emphasize enough what helped me is my mentors, my relationships with people my champions who, you know, put me in front of the limelight in order to shine a little bit more to get that exposure so that when I was ready to retire, I went from literally on a Thursday retired, took Friday off and started on Monday as the director of training for this security company. And so, you know, I, I don't know, I'd have to think a little bit more about what hurt me because I really feel like I was blessed with this opportunity to just have the freedom to explore. Um, before I retired. And so that's really how it all started. It's so great to see somebody move from police executive into a leadership role too. Um, I think uh, the, my whole goal for wanting to help our law enforcement brothers and sisters come into the private sector is to help businesses be more resilient. And uh, you did that. Did, did you see a career in the private sector as you were getting ready to retire from law enforcement? Is, was that the goal or was it, I'm just going to go out into the world and let, let whatever happens happen? Well, because I retired, you know, early, I guess. Not, I didn't retire early. I retired young um, at, at the age that I could in California. And so I was looking for my second career to last several years. And now yeah. looking at it, you know, next month will be my ninth year out of retirement and you know in the private sector security world and so that seems like a whole lifetime ago so that was my goal was to try and work as long as i could in, in private sector security and wherever that took me then that would be great and i wouldn't have dreamed in my wildest dreams to have had the experiences that i've had so far in the nine years i've been doing this so absolutely well, and there's a roadmap right in law enforcement from patrol person uh, and, and or i even say cadet through patrol, through detectives and leadership, and, and then eventually up into where the senior ranks where you eventually retired from. In the private sector, it's a little different. Did you feel like, hey, I'm a police executive. I can, today, I, I'm doing police stuff. Tomorrow, I can do security stuff. Or was there a learning curve that you had when you came into the private sector? There was definitely a learning curve. I, I feel like I had a, a bit of a jump on it. And I also had people in my life who had, you know, retired out of the same um, county that I retired out of, who basically told me, don't expect too much when you're going into this next role. Don't expect a lot of money. Don't, ex in, in fact, expect a pay cut from what you're used to. Uh, don't expect a big title right away. And don't think that you can just waltz into a room and have everybody respect you because this is what you've done for 29 years. You have to continue, especially as a woman, I'm going to be honest, yeah. you have to continue to prove yourself. And so 
you know, he said, leave your captain bars at the door when you walk into the private sector. And, you know, I'm not one to really wear my ego on my sleeve anyway. And so, but it was really good advice for me to hear that so that I kind of checked all that at the door and like, well, this is what I, this is what I used to do, you know, and of course I'm this, I'm this captain and I've, I've done all these things. And it's like, no one cares anymore, you know? That's right. <laughs> Well, they care. Hopefully, they're appreciative. They care, but... but I get what you're saying. It's a, it is a different skill. You know, I, I make it the analogy that it's like the cousin of law enforcement, um, and you know where there's a lot of similarities, and then there's things that aren't. But um, it, you went into a contract security role. Did that? Do you think that that helped propel you into what we? To call typically in-house roles um, that you've had now with Pixar and, and others? Yeah, I think understanding that side of it, being, you know, being the contract security firm uh, where, you know, you are absolutely on point with KPIs and everything else and the client is, you know, everything and jump when they say jump and, and all of that. So it, it did give me a good, um, you know, experience for a few years on how to, you know, just manage the expectations of the client and understanding what their, um, you know, expectations of us were. And I had a, I had a pretty narrow role in that first job, you know, I was the director of training, but I did build the program from the ground up. So I had a lot of opportunity to see a lot of different clients and understand mm -hmm. what they wanted and what they needed. And so, yeah, it, it was an interesting role to step into. Um, and then once I became, you know, in going into Pixar and as the, you know, the, you know, just the job that I held, um, which was also unique because my security team was, they were all Pixar employees. So I didn't use contract security that much anyway, but I did understand, you know, the role that they play and, and we did use them for bigger events and things like that. So I think, yeah, I got to see a really interesting balance of the two. This has been a great conversation and I want to pause there because there's something that we definitely want to talk about in our next segment, which is when do you start and what do you do when you started? Uh, you had a really unique opportunity where you could start working off the job um, and or moonlighting for others uh, that you, you could kind of burn in that way. And um, I think that's a great way to, to learn how to do something. And so in our next segment, I definitely want to dig in there and, and let's pull that apart. And I appreciate you taking time to talk with us. And uh, what I want to tell the audience at home is like these, comment, um, follow this, share this with people because the, the experiences that we're talking about here are not um, unique and specific to our, the people that we're talking with and you, Elena. Uh, but it's the, there's a lot of people going through the same thing, and they're learn from our experiences, and, and so I appreciate you sharing that with us. And so we'll pause here. Awesome to be back on with you, Elena. Let's talk about the question that in law enforcement, our law enforcement partners tell, ask us all the time, which is, when do I start considering making the jump? Like I retire next week, should I be thinking about transition? What do we, <laughs> what do we say to that, Elena? You tell I've had those conversations. I've had those conversations with people, and it's not a, it's not because, it, it's not for a lack of trying or understanding. It's just that I, I don't think people get good coaching around that. You know, when you're in law enforcement, until it's too late, or until you're like six months away, and then you start to realize, oh, I, I need to have another job, or I want to have another job. And so, yeah, I, it's not a right or wrong way, it just is. And, and so it's things like this that you're doing, you know, um, cop to co corporate, things that I've done in the past with Cal Chiefs and women leaders in law enforcement, it's all helping, you know, our, like you're saying, our brothers and sisters get prepared. And so what I'll say to that is start as early as you can doing a bunch of different things. So I've talked to cops who have had you know roles within the police department moved up in the chain and that's all they've done so what i it, there's nothing wrong with that but i think what gives you a broader experience and a better resume going forward is raise your hand as much as you can for those cross-departmental teams where you're working within your city or county government 
and you're working with different people from HR, from planning, from the library, you know, wherever, get involved with that. Do um, service clubs, you know, there's a bunch in different, you know, communities. Get involved in nonprofit boards, whether it's your, you know, your kid's soccer team or, you know, your church or whatever it is. Um, it doesn't matter. Get involved in a nonprofit board. Try and get on some um, local, state, federal initiatives or committees or councils. Um, that just gives you a broader experience of people. It gives you diversity of thought. It gets your connections out there. It establishes relationships. Um, corporate par partnerships as much as you can. If there's a, a way that you can work within your business community, do that. Um, so essentially, I'm looking at my notes here because I don't want to forget. Um, internships or job swaps within your um, agency. I, I did an internship for three months in the city manager's office. It was fantastic. I learned a bunch of different things, met a whole host of new different people. And so I think what that does, it, it just gives you this kind of really interesting background that you can point to in your resume where you can say, over the last 10 years, I've not only been a cop, but I've done 15 other things along the way. So I think it's really important to just, if your boss lets you, just do those, those extra duty jobs, even if it takes away you know, your family time a little bit, just do it. it. It makes a lot of sense and it helps you in the long run. Great points. And, and uh, I'd like to think that what helped me a lot in preparation, not that I realized it or was planning on this, in my preparation for or my uh, transition was all the task force work that I was on because I had to think like and communicate with people that I wouldn't normally have to communicate whether that was in the inside the United States or outside the United States working with foreign law enforcement. Folks uh, from different communities think differently than we do and I think that's what uh, we definitely both learned in the private sector whether you're working with HR or finance or or uh, information security or whoever, they're, they have a language of their own. You, and the more you understand it, the more successful you are in the private sector, I think. Um, how about education? What kind of education should uh, folks be considering, whether it's certifications or should they look at an MBA program? And you, what, what's your experience there? Well, I think, you know, I have a huge bias towards lifelong learning and, you know, getting as much formal education as you can. But those other associations, like you had mentioned, um, ASIS, uh, ATAP, Association of Threat Assessment Professionals, I don't want to assume everybody knows what these acronyms are. Um, but anything that can get you that extra experience and, you know, working groups and, again, subcommittees, but for these associations, and it's really just the relationships. I mean, I have not, I have not been given a job opportunity without having a relationship with someone in that company or that business. Um, so I, it's not like I got these, you know, these great jobs all on my own. You know, I had people who I knew, um, and some people not even that well, but they knew of me and they knew of my reputation, and that's how I got the phone call for the next job. And so I can't stress enough how important relationships are and really not just meeting people, you know, but building on those relationships and making sure that you're touching base with people and um, not just that, you know, oh, I met you at a meeting once and I got a business card and that's the last time I talked to you. So it's really super important to get involved in those associations ahead of time um, before you leave law enforcement. Yeah, cultivating the relationships is everything. I, I everything. totally agree with you, and 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 more than, hey, I need help. You know, you make a call, a call about, hey, how are you? I know it's COVID. You know, can we grab coffee one time just to catch up? You know, cultivating that relationship has got to be more than, I need a job. Can you help me out? Um, I totally agree with you, and something I've been saying a lot too is, when in this very near future, I think a lot of these very top jobs are going to be because you knew somebody or somebody knew you. Mm -hmm. And so how do our folks who are still in law enforcement maybe or maybe have just transitioned to the private sector, how can they put themselves out there and get their expertise or get their knowledge out there. Is social media a good way to do that? Is like what we're doing here a good way to do that? Or 
you know, give me a sense for what you, what you would recommend. Yeah, I think, you know, LinkedIn is a huge part of, of, you know, everybody's brand at this point. And if you don't have a good LinkedIn profile right now as a police officer, or you're starting to build a different pro profile in LinkedIn, you know, now is the time to start. And um, I, I will say something else about social media is, I'll say two things. If you don't think that your hiring manager and your boss's boss or whomever in the company you're applying for is is scrolling through your social media, you you've got another thing coming. It's um it's not like in law enforcement where you have to sign a waiver and you know then people can talk about you. People are making phone calls or <laughs> behind your back <laughs> when you're applying for a different um, when you're applying for a private sector job and they're looking through anything they can find on you and. So if you're making those snarky comments on social media or you're just being unprofessional, they're gonna see it and that's not a good idea. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, so yeah, the social media part is huge. And I'm sorry, I went down a rabbit hole right there. What was the what was the other part of the question? I, I, I think you're nailing it with, with social media. I mean, there are so many people that just think like, oh, well, I'm, not, I'm gonna only engage when I have, I'm gonna speak my truth. And um, I think that's maybe for Facebook and only your friends, you know, in a really tight group. Uh, to your point, LinkedIn, I see so many uh, profiles that they don't have the picture, it's not filled out fully, it just says policeman or policewoman or something. And you're just like, really? You can't even understand that there's a new nuance term. Um, and uh, the, I don't believe that there's really any excuse for that. Uh, I, I think we all have to use the technology to its fullest advantage and, and have positive interactions with folks. Um, I do, there's just so much negativity in the world right now. I, I want, and this is why I'm trying to do this too, and, and you've been a real positive voice out there, Elena, on social media and otherwise. You're always out there talking about and giving people the kudos that they deserve. Um, and as well as your, your, not only your team at your current employer, but also the ASIS team that, that you lead uh, for the San Francisco Bay Area chapter. Um, so that, that's, you're, you're nailing kind of exactly what the message I think we're all trying to deliver here, which is, you know, reach out to the folks, folks that can help you early and often cultivate um, authentic relationships. Uh, well, any, any last yeah, words? I'll yeah, Before I'll add to that up. because I think it's important to note that, you know, when someone says, hey, let me know how I can help you or I'm willing to help you or, hey, call me anytime or email me and set up time, do it. If people offer that to you, take them up on it. I mean, I'm probably like, this is what I do on my in my spare time all the time is talking to people because I think it's important. That's just a, a value that I have, you know, service to others, et cetera. That's what beat into me by my mother. Um, and so... You know, I just, if someone's gonna offer their help to you, take them up on it. And don't, you know, stonewall someone. And then two years later, when you really need a job, call them up and say, hey, um, remember when, you know, you offered to help? And I'm like, yeah, two years ago when you completely went dark on me. So there's, there's ways that you can finesse those relationships where you're not gonna burn any bridges. So I would, uh, I would offer that up to people. Don't too. burn any bridges. I agree with you. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing. Hopefully they've learned that in their law enforcement career um, yeah. as well. And, and um, again, Elena, I can't thank you enough for coming on and talking with us and, and helping people and being uh, open to, to being a good networker and, and a good partner. Um, you know, we, we need more people like you in leadership positions. Um, we need your judgment, we need your experience. Uh, businesses absolutely need to be more resilient and you're gonna help them and you are helping them do that. Um, so I appreciate you taking your time to talk with us today, thanks. Thanks Scott, I miss you. Miss Come you back too. to California. <laughs> I will visit. Okay, all right, take care.